Welcome viewer, welcome to our first activity. Here is the breaking news from Saudi Arabia. Yes, United Arab Emirates. When Iranian evacuees from Sudan were being flown out of Saudi Arabia on Saturday, a top Saudi military official went as far as boarding their plane back home to beat them a warm fuel. This is your country, the kingdom's western region commander Major General Ahmed al Dabis declared to the departing Iranians as he held hands with Hassan Jarangar, Iran's church affairs to the kingdom. If you need anything in Saudi, you are most welcome, Iran and Saudi, they are brothers. 65 Iranians evacuated from Sudan by the Saudi military were welcomed in the Saudi Red Sea city of Jeddah with flowers, images of which were broadcast on both Iranian and Saudi state television. The beast told Jarnagar that the friendly welcome for the Iranians was from the directives of the leadership from the king from the crown prince. Such images would have been inconceivable just a month ago when Iran and Saudi Arabia were bitter regional voice engaging in multiple proxy conflicts across the Middle East but the two buried the hat shared in March with Chinese mediation after nearly seven years of hostility and hope to reopen embassy soon. This can only bring goodwill from the Iranians with the hope that you will be reciprocated all Sihabi, a Saudi analyst and writer told CNN. The kingdom is now on a mission to revamp its global image and mind fences with former foes. The diplomatic efforts are the latest in a series of moves that position Riyadh in a peace-making role, which analysts say is a strategic pivot away from more than a decade of confrontational and interventionalist foreign policy. There is a new foreign policy at play here. Anna Jacob, senior Gulf analyst at the Brussels-based International Crisis Group, think tank told CNN Saudi Arabia is seeking to assert itself more and more on the international stage through mediation and raising its diplomatic profile. Riyadh's new foreign policy is more independent and prioritized so the interests, she said. The kingdom's latest attempt at diplomacy came in Sudan where forces loyal to two rival general Sudanese armed forces, Commander Abdel Fateh al-Burhan and Muhammad Hamadan Dagalo, head of the rapid support forces, are buying for control. Hundreds have been killed and thousands injured in the fighting. In images broadcast widely across Saudi news outlets, Saudi Arabian forces were seen evacuating thousands of evacuees from Port Sudan to the coastal city of Jeddah, a 12-hour journey across the Red Sea. Men, women and children were given Saudi flags to wave as cameras documented their arrival. The kingdom on Monday said that it has evacuated more than 5,000 people from over 100 nationalities. We will do whatever we can to alleviate that crisis. Fahad Najer, spokesperson for the Saudi embassy in the US, told CNN's Becky Anderson on Tuesday, we are leading this effort, but we are working very closely with the United States and our regional and international partners. With the help of the United States, Saudi Arabia last week also mediated a brief truce between Sudan's SAF commander Al Burhan and RSF chief Dagalo. The truce was extended for another 72 hours on Monday and the kingdom is reportedly joining the United Arab Emirates, the US and Egypt in efforts to broker a trust between the two commanders. The Saudi effort in Sudan was an opportunity to put Saudi's considerable resources in the Red Sea at the international community's disposal to help, said Sihabi, and that can only reflect all in the kingdom. This now diplomacy comes as Saudi Arabia prioritizes economic growth at home, which requires regional stability to succeed. The one trillion economy has been on a quest to move away from its traditional reputation as a conservative combative oil producer and towards a global economic player and key regional tourism and business hub. Ben Dasifot, Fosak TV.